What up, y'all? It's your boy, Martin, a.k.a. The Boxing Purist. Welcome once again to the Truth and Absolute channel, where I speak the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, good God Almighty. All right, y'all, now listen, if you're new to the channel, make sure that before you leave, whether it be 10 seconds in, you watch the whole video, half, whatever, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. If you've been subscribed to my channel, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. If y'all want to talk boxing, you guys already know what to do. Go in the comments section, say what you want to say. Someone's going to respond to you and y'all could have a discussion the old fashioned way. No one getting angry, no one getting mad, no one getting none of that. Because why? We're grown men and women and we should be able to have discussions without leaving pissed off or mad. Now, before I start this video, I just want to clear some smoke, okay? I wouldn't call it smoke, but I just want to clear something up. On my last video that I made, um, uh, what was it called? The uh, Canelo has had enough. Um, I said something a little bit wrong and instead of responding to all the comments because for that particular video, many of the comments were going at the same thing and I just want to, I felt like I could just clear that up now instead of responding to the same thing over and over again. Do you guys blame me? Thank you. Didn't think so. So I was talking about Canelo and I just, you know, and before I get into anything, yo, let me just say this. Myself, I'm a man of faith. So when I talk about someone making a mistake, I'm not saying I hold it against them, nor does it diminish anything that they have accomplished, including me, including you guys, including everybody. That's not how I get down. I simply call a spade a spade and that's it. Where I messed up in that video is I said that Canelo got busted for steroids. Now... I had a little bit of backlash for that, and it's understandable because it was not a steroid, okay? I just want to clear that up. It was not a steroid. However, it was a banned substance in boxing. Now, we could go on and on about how did it happen? Was it on accident? Was it on purpose? Listen, whatever, it happened in the past. I'm just saying that it happened. I wasn't trying to take away from Canelo or anything of the sort. He dropped dirty, whatever it was. He came back, redeemed his, you know, his identity, redeemed himself against Gennady Golovkin after the first fight. So it's over. So I just want everyone to know, I'm sorry. What I meant to say was banned substance. OK, and we don't need to go back and forth. Was it on purpose? What is it not on purpose? It doesn't matter at this point where I messed up was calling it a steroid. I'm sorry for that. I apologize. I'll be a lot more careful with my words from now on. So anyway. While we're on the topic, and I know that I tend to make a lot of videos about Canelo. Somebody pointed it out to me, but listen, man, it's a trending topic. And when we do our little shows on YouTube, especially someone for me that's still beginning and my platform is not big at all. You know what I'm saying? I got to talk about the big stories because I got to throw the hooks out there. And it's it's what I'm interested in, too. It's it's the biggest thing going on in boxing. Why wouldn't I cover it? Anyways, on this one, though, I was watching some videos last night and myself. I never really put much thought into what happened between Canelo and De La Hoya. Right. I mean, for one, you know, they were together for a long time. They made a whole lot of money together. They made a whole lot of noise together. And I didn't quite understand where the beef started between them or rather beef. What Canelo's problem was with Oscar De La Hoya, what made it, you know, go into what it was or whatever. So in an interview that I saw with Oscar De La Hoya, they asked him about that. And when they asked him about it, I was happy because, again, I had forgot about it, but I never even really knew what the beef was about. So and this is going to kind of remind you guys a lot. If you've been following Canelo for a while, the sport, you will remember this time period. Um, and then I'll give my thoughts on it. So there was a time where De La Hoya said, you know, pretty much, you know, I forget what fight it was of Canelo, but he pretty much said, and I'm not going to call De La Hoya a hypocrite or nothing on this one, because he openly said, you know, I had seven, six or seven trainers in his career, right? He had a lot of trainers in his career. To name some, of course, he had Freddie Roach. Of course, he had Floyd Mayweather Sr. Of course, he had, uh, who was that other dude? It's like the first guy I rem I'm not remembering who to him too well, but um, anyways, so he had a lot of trainers. He's open about that. So I guess there was a time period where he pretty much said, maybe it's time for Canelo to move on from Eddie Reynoso, or maybe, you know, Eddie Reynoso needs a little bit of help with Canelo. Obviously, De La Hoya saying that it was probably pointing to Canelo in his eyes. I wouldn't say being one dimensional, but just being limited to what Canelo can probably do with a little bit more arsenal in his pocket that he could use inside the ring. Right. 
And I guess that was it, you know, I guess because we got to remember, too, you know, Eddie Reynoso and Canelo have been uh, close for a very, very long time. I think it was Eddie Reynoso who discovered Canelo long, long ago in the gyms in Mexico. And he's been training Canelo since Canelo was just a kid. So it's, it's almost like he's like a father figure, uncle, really, really close to Canelo. You know what I'm saying? So obviously at that time, point in time, those words weren't going to sit right with Canelo for someone to pretty much, you know, know Oscar could have been like yo maybe it's time you know to add more arsenal maybe in Canelo's ears he was like you need to move on from Eddie so I could see where the misunderstanding could be on both ends when it comes to that you know what I'm saying now my thoughts on that are this and I'm gonna keep it real with y'all I don't know exactly how long ago it was I don't remember exactly to give you guys a perfect time frame what fight was happening at the time or none of that but I too And this is being real. And y'all know that I'm a fan of Canelo. I, too, went through a stage where I was like, could you imagine, you know, somebody like a Floyd Mayweather Sr. stepping in to to train Canelo or to help train Canelo? Not that Eddie wasn't doing a good job, but I'm just thinking, you know, imagine adding someone like a Floyd Mayweather Sr., all the years of knowledge that he has and, and, you know, just feeding Canelo. Or there's a lot of trainers. There's a lot of people out there just to help him expand a little bit. I, too, went through that. So I see where Oscar was coming from with that. So I think that's a simple statement a man can make. I don't personally see any harm in it. It just depends on how you take it. So according to Oscar De La Hoya, that's what started all of it. Now, being realistic, that's probably what was the start of it. And, you know, De La Hoya made Canelo, he got him a lot of good deals and made him a whole lot of money, a whole lot of money, right? So... In talking about that, even though he didn't say it, of course, in my opinion, Oscar is going to be a little bit sour, right? I mean, in his eyes, he's like, dude, I discovered you. I help you land many deals. I help you land some big, big fights. Um, I'm not going to say he made Canelo because he did not make Canelo. You know, obviously, Canelo, with his look, what he does in the ring, he made himself. All glory be to God, obviously. But you can see where De La Hoya is like, damn, dog, now you're just going to, you know, now you're making money for this person, making money for that person. You're collecting this much. And obviously, Oscar De La Hoya, being a promoter himself for a very long time, knows in debt how much people are making compared to what he made, knows what he's bringing to the table, knows what future fights could bring, and how Oscar sees it he may not say it but it's like damn i could have had a piece of that (laughs) you know what i'm saying or he could be saying oh that ungrateful dude whatever this and that oscar went on to say that you know that canelo has called him unloyal and stuff in the past and then he brought out saying you know who's the one that keeps changing promoters and keeps on going to different networks I wouldn't necessarily call that unloyal in Canelo's part because it's not like he's dedicating himself to no one promoter or one, you know, network. He's just going where the most money is. So I'm not going to say he's unloyal. He's just a businessman. He's going where the most money is at. You know, if he's fulfilling whatever they put on paper for him, cool. And if they break something in that contract, he leaves. I, I don't see a big deal with that. But again, I guess Oscar also said that Canelo was scared of David Benavidez. Now, that's old news. I feel like everybody's saying that. But we obviously see that there is a little bit of tension there. So I'm not surprised that Oscar De La Hoya is saying that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not surprised that he's coming out and saying that. So it was really interesting to me that that's what started everything. Of course, this is just Oscar De La Hoya's side. Canelo, you know, Canelo's not one to sit there and give details and really speak on someone and and say what is going on. But that is what came out of Oscar's mouth. Who knows if Canelo will respond? You know that Canelo can't see Oscar De La Hoya without closing his fist. At least that's what we've been seeing. But who knows? Anyway, what's up with that? On other news, while speaking about Oscar De La Hoya, though, and you guys probably already saw it, is... Oscar has mentioned it more than once that he would like to sign Shakur Stevenson to make a big fight, you know, under him. I think it'd be a great move for Shakur Stevenson to make a move to Golden Boy because we could say whatever about Oscar De La Hoya. We could say whatever. The man is a good businessman. The man knows the the sport. He's been involved in the sport. I think that Shakur is at his time right now where he needs to make a decision. I know he has a fight coming up, but he needs to get handled the right way. If not, it could end up being a Demetrius Andrade situation where, 
you you got all the talent in the world, you got everything going for you, but you're not promoted correctly. You're not making the wise decisions all on your own. And time is just passing. Time waits for nobody. I don't care who you are. Time doesn't wait for you. If you choose to sit out, your body's going to age and there's nothing you could do for that while the world moves on without you. You know what I'm saying? So I would like to see it. I hope that Shakur does something soon and quick or he's going to miss out on what everything that he could potentially do inside of that boxing ring. So, yo, so I just wanted to throw it out there. And again, y'all, with the whole Canelo steroid thing, sorry about that. What I meant to say was banned substance. <clears throat> anyway, y'all, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Drop a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about Shakur Stevenson. Stevenson possibly signing with Oscar De La Hoya and what you guys think about, you know, when Oscar De La Hoya called for, you know, Canelo to maybe get a new trainer. Y'all think that was a low blow? Do you think that's something that's fair as his promoter? I gave you guys my opinion on it. Drop it down low and let's talk about it. Anyway, enjoy your day. God bless you and yours. And remember, the truth shall set you free. Peace.